So we're joined by Scott Johnson, 1-0 pro, recently winning on Almighty after getting the first round submission. You alright, buddy? What's happening? You alright? Not too bad at Sal. Get right into it, obviously. You've had your pro debut and it couldn't have gone any better getting the first round submission. How are you feeling coming off of that win, buddy? Um, I felt good coming off it, like, but I would have liked to have got a bit more time in there, to be honest, a bit more experience and, like, at least a round or something in, but I'll take a first round finish, like, over um, a three round war, like, less damage, didn't get no injuries coming out of it, straight back in the scene and fighting against second of July. I, I would have got um, would have got a fight earlier if I could, but Ray couldn't get me a fight on like Almighty at the end of March or something like that. Um, um, UK is probably a bit short to do, to be honest. So, but we're looking at July second and March. I've got an opponent like just waiting on the announcement. So, good. Yeah, and as well as you mentioned there, in terms of how you wanted the Mar experience, uh, just to get the round and feel, sort of get a feel for the five minute rounds. Going into that fight, um, what was the biggest change in terms of how you've been training now that you turned the pro and you know your pro debut was coming up? Um, not much because my last few um, amateur fights have been five five threes, so it's fifteen minutes anyway. It's just a little bit. I, I reckon the, the the five minutes in the pro game will be a bit easier because in the amateur it sort of feels a bit rushed because you've only got three minutes to work, so you think. After a minute, it takes like a minute to feel out and then you've got to take down and then you've only got like a minute and a half left to work. So I think the um, the pro reels will probably fit, fit my style a bit better. So I'll, I'll probably get a few more finishes and stuff like that at the pro. And training wise, I, I pretty much for the last three or four fights, I've been training like a pro anyway. I work full time as well. So I was like booking mornings off work and training like mornings three times a week and and I was doing my strength conditioning program. Uh, that's one thing that I changed this camp. I had an actual proper S and C program, so I'm going to continue to do that. I got I'm quite naturally strong anyway, but I got like really strong and my cardio went through the roof. So I think re rest of heart rate was like forty nine or fifty or something like that. So it's good. Yeah, and in terms of just how you mentioned there, in terms of the S and C, and then you've obviously got the full time job and the training as well. So, in terms of balancing all of those things, what is that like, obviously? Because that's one of those things that, unless you're a fighter, you don't know much about in terms of that sense. Yeah, it's 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 quite difficult. Like, to, um, um, like I start work at six in the morning, so I'm up at five, and then, like, chain at half ten, and I'll have to go home and have a little, little an hour or two sleep, then have some food, get, like, some energy back in myself, and then, and then I'm back in the gym and I come home, and I go straight to sleep. So, it's basically, that's, that's my life for, like, ten weeks. But eventually, I think I'll probably end up quitting my job probably maybe next year or reducing my hours down and putting a bit more, even more time than I can already do in, into it. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and as well, in terms of going into your pro debut, I'm not sure if you knew, but you went in there as the underdog as well. From what I saw, there was a few polls out there that were putting you at maybe 35% of people thought you'd win, 65 thought he would. But to then sort of go in there and sort of prove everyone wrong and then sort of voting against you, is that something that always feels good to do, or is it something that doesn't really play on your mind too much? You know what you're going to do when you get in there, regardless. Well, them polls must have been being voted by some smackheads or something because <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know who was voting for that. Not a chance. I I I knew in that. I I told everyone under two minutes first round, really naked joke. I told everyone before the fight. Everyone was saying, "But well, how do you think it's going to end?" And I told them. And I went up to a mate, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah I was close. One minute fifty-seven. I said, "Yeah, we're still under two minutes. They'll win it." So. I knew myself that he was going to come out and rush all his fights. He does, does done the same thing, come out, rush the fight. And if he pre if, if anyone presses me against the cage and tries to take me down, they're going for a ride or they're getting tucked down and, and, and smoked. So. Yeah, and in terms of your amateur career, obviously you had a lot of fights and I believe it was around 11, 12. Yeah. So what, when was the moment in your amateur career that you knew you was ready to make that move into the pro scene? I, I was just waiting on Phil and Dean. Like Phil and Dean was like just just get experience in and fight who you can. And I think I was meant to fight uh, Luke Pembefi before, like all that lockdown shite. I was meant to fight him before that, and um, that got called off because of lockdown and all the shows had to cancel and stuff. So I probably would have went pro 
last year, but just because of COVID and stuff, it put sort of set, set it back a bit. Because after Pembe, if you had pretty fourth, every, every person that could, I meant to have thought Liam Gittins, Zach Fry, Pembe, if he, you know, Connor Wilson, I thought like pretty much the best flyweight that I'm sure that, that I could have at the time. So I've, I've experienced everything at amateur, so it was like Phil that was like, well, I think now it's time to go over to the pro pro game. So like I've been training since I was 10, so I've been training for 15 years, so it's not like I'm not experienced enough. Yeah, and in terms of that as well, obviously you mentioned the quality of opponents that you're facing, the opponent that you're facing in your pro debut. Usually some people might try and find the easy fight, but you picked a very difficult opponent. He won his last three fights that he had in his amateur career as well. So was that something that you want? Is that something that you were looking to do? Make sure that the opponent in your pro debut was a good yeah. skilled opponent who would give you a fight, or yeah, I just want to go in there. Like you see, some of these people who had the amateur career and then they go out and try and pad like five fights into the pro career, and then they have to fight someone who's actually half a bit all right, and they get filled in because they haven't experienced anything. Like I, I've experienced like everything I could at amateur. I thought Liam Gittins who to me, is probably at one of the hardest fights out there at flyweight because of how horrible and gritty he is. Like, if you if you haven't got heart and you're not in your fight him and you haven't got any heart, he's going to smoke you because you just press you and, and fill you in. And then I thought Penn Bafey, Zach Fry, both dead tall and difficult to fight. Connor Wilson, Karate, like his fingers are Karate belt, black belt or something like that. So he, his striking style was very good and stuff like that. So... I, I feel like I can pretty much fight most people I, probably, I think I got offered an opponent who had like seven fights first but feeling that was like well that's not really suitable to fight but we'll get you someone good because I asked for someone good I didn't want to fight someone shit because what's the point point? and I think my me, me next opponent like I can't obviously say nothing about it but my next opponent another good opponent from a good Jimmy he's from um, Fearless MMA with Jake Hadley and stuff like that changed there so he, he's a good opponent so he it's not another easy. It's not an easy fight where I'm just going to go in and take take him out. It's, it's a tough fight again, but I still reckon I'll get a finish. So I'm looking forward to that fight. It's going to be a tough fight, but that's what I want. I want to be tested. So yeah, and as well, obviously, you're not the only Johnson that's competing in MMA. I know we've got a younger brother, I believe, that's competing as well. So to sort of see older, him, come... I've, got a, I've got an older brother who fights as well. He's one and one as a pro. There's three of us. <laughs> So, like, just to have, obviously, your family in there, they're all fighting, they all know what they're doing. How's that like in terms of keeping motivation during a training camp or just before a fight? How much does that actually help you? Well, going into me, me younger brother, John, he was meant to fight on the same night, um, 2nd of July. Uh, I think you've seen on the post today, he was meant to fight Mackenzie. <laughs> um, he pulled out with a shoulder injury or whatever he pulled out with, but... Hopefully they can rematch that fight because to me I I think it's a good fight and it's a good fight for both of them two good good prospects. No one's really seen anything of our John be before, but everyone in the gym knows how good he is. He, he he he's basically he's basically like a younger version of me, the same style, everything else. He, he he's like he's very good, he's well rounded and stuff like that. So and, and Mackenzie's the same. I like no disrespect to Mackenzie. Mackenzie's a good opponent. It's a good fight. That's that's why we match that because. We don't want to be taking easy fights, and I think everyone knows that Aspire doesn't take easy, easy fights. Phil and Dean don't want us taking easy fights, but we don't fight no cans. Like some other gyms are just fighting shit people, and then everyone's like, oh, they're, they're good, but they're just like fighting cans. So, so I've had John, our John literally done the same the same camp as me. He'd done a professional camp, he was doing his SNC with me, he was training the same amount of time as me. We were going on five mile runs twice a week. We were doing sprint work on the Saturday. He'd done a very professional camp, so it was a bit gutted that he, he, he uh, missed out on an opportunity. He got another fight, another opponent from um, Bradford. I can't remember what his name was. But he missed weight um, on the morning. So John, John had cut weight. John had made weight in the morning. Phil, Phil texted us at about half nine, half an hour before he was meant to fight. Well, half an hour before he was meant to weigh in even. And his opponent was missing weight by like 10 pounds or something. So we weren't obviously we ain't gonna take that fight. So we we had to we had no opportunity, no um thing. He butted the clan it because it's just stupid. But he he obviously just didn't want to, he just didn't want the smoke in the first place. That kid because you're missing weight by ten pounds. He might he might have just go go back to school or something. That kid he was meant to fight because he's not gonna go anywhere in the sport if he's missing by ten ten pounds. Daft. Yeah, and as well, in terms, as you mentioned, though, obviously, another thing for fighters is that if they do have the opponents that they miss weight astronomically and they can't get the fight as well, what is one of those, sorry, I'm not sure if you've experienced it as well, but 
in terms of when something like that does happen, the, the late pullouts just before you start quitting weight, etc., how can that play on a fighter's mind, sort of not knowing if they've got an opponent or they find out at the very last minute that the opponents have to pull out for whatever reason? Yeah, well, it was um, it was April Fool's Day then, so it was the 1st of April. He thought it was April Fool, he thought Phil was taking the piss. But I said, lad, Phil's not going to be doing an April Fool and you're saying your opponent's pulled out. But it is, it's, it's bad, like... You look at Luke Baines, Luke Baines stepped in for an opponent, then he, then his opponent changed, then he had to fight, then he pulled out. Like mentally that's that's gonna like affect people and it, it does affect your performance. Um when I fought Connor Wilson, he missed weight by I think three point two key or something, six pounds or something like that. But um and then he come back after two hours, didn't cut any more weight and but I had that like three years out from the sport or two years out from the sport due to injuries and stuff. So we took the fight anyway, which me and Phil always say we regret taking that fight because I ended up getting beat, so I ended up getting stopped, but he was huge and he was massive. So, like, that that was, like, a bad decision. Like, that's why he said, John was saying he wanted to take the fight. He was saying, I'll take the fight. I've trained and I've dieted and all that. And I said, no, because it's happened to me where my opponents miss weight and then they come in there. So he might he might have been already cut three or four kilos and, he's already, and then he's five, five kilos everything already. So fight day, you might be ten kilos heavier than what you are. So like, as shit as it is, I, I would never take like, any amateur or obviously pro, definitely one hundred percent pro. But any amateur, if your opponent's missing weight, just don't take the fight. Just just leave it because it's not worth it. It's not worth getting beat. It's not worth it. It's not worth it one, one bit. They they're unprofessional. So don't give them a fight. Don't let them think that it's acceptable to do because it's not. Yeah, and as well, you've mentioned as well, obviously, you train out of Aspire, which at the moment it's coming through with some of the best damage talent that there is. And there's a lot of people like yourself who've just gone pro. There's Marlon Jones and many more as well. Yeah. So in, in terms of the, the gym that you're training out of, what is the sort of outlook for that gym and where do you expect to see everyone and yourself well, in either maybe a year's time or just in the future in general? Yeah, we're definitely 100% going to have a few fighters making in the UFC in the next few years. You know, we've already got like Mokev. Mokev's in the UFC you now. He, he trains when he's in the UK. He comes and trains at Aspire. We've got Danny Roberts there all the time, and the gym is absolutely full of killers. We've got there's like you, you, there's people who you haven't really seen. There's like the likes of um, Sam Lynch. He fights at bantamweight. He's a beast. You don't really I haven't certainly seen much of him because it's due to the, like little knocks and niggles. You've got Luke Baines, Liam McCracken, Marlon Jones, Adam Robinson, Dean. Like the list, the list are endless. But, like, he's haven't even seen some of the prospects that are coming through. Little Regan, on, he's fighting this Saturday on um, Meltdown, I think it is. He's just turned 13. I, I might just retire before he gets to, like, 18, because I can't be arsed off and just buy it. <laughs> and the same, same with Little Shea. Little Shea's fighting again this weekend. I think Shea's fighting on Meltdown and Regan's fighting on BMF, I think. Um, but them, they're, both of them are 13 and, like, the talent that they've got. And then... There's even like a few, like Sophie Bellis, she's another one, a, a girl who, who's saying in the gym, she's like 13 or 14. These are, these are, and, and, and like Saskia and stuff like that. These are like kids who are like training more than like a, half of these pros who, who are like half arsing. These kids are getting time off school and coming in and training in the morning and getting like, not just like every now and again when they're off school, they've actually got like time off school given by the schools because they're that good. So like, what they're gonna be like in a few years? It's gonna it's gonna be scary. It's like it's it's crazy. Yeah, and as you mentioned, that in in terms of it, when you first started in MMA, you've been in it for a long time now, over ten years, fifteen years. But what would you say is that sort of biggest change from when you first started to now, in terms of just everything, whether it's the amateur fighters or the pro fighters as well now as well? I think the the level in the UK overall is like gone like 10 times better than like when I first started fighting like not many people knew knew the, knew the sport there weren't many black belts and there weren't many things like now I'm saying like I'm saying I'm saying under uh, Phil Turner and Dean though like Phil to me personally Phil's probably one of the best coaches in the UK like the knowledge the knowledge that he's got are unbelievable like and it just shows that our, the coaches in our gym are like at the higher level now because you don't really see James going and putting seven fights on the show and coming away with seven seven wins, five finishes. We, we don't see that very often. So like, it just speaks for itself, really. Like, the the level of the gate of like MMA in the UK now is like it, it's it's like it's up there. It's that good. So when I was younger, um, I used to train under 
um, Sam and Audley and my first MMA coach was Rob Broughton who used to fight in the UFC heavyweight he was my first ever MMA coach and Sam and Audley um, he was a striking coach at Next Gen but he, was, he, he had his own gym at the time and he was like one Dad and Till's first Muay Thai coach like when I was younger Dad and Till was saying in our gym in my, my old Muay Thai gym when I, when I first started that. So, like, just like I said, the, the level's just gone through the roof. Like, so imagine what it's going to be like in three, four years. I think we've caught up to, like, America now. Like, our fighters are, like, put on, like, on the same level as the Americans. Like, where we've always been, like, a little step behind. Now we're caught, we're caught up. Like, UFC London just showed how, how, how much the level in the UK has gone up. A hundred percent. And then as well, in terms of the goals for you as well, I'm sure you've got a rough idea of what you're wanting to do in your pro career, but um, what would you say are the next steps? Are we still going to compete on the regional scene? There's Almighty in July, hopefully for you. But is, yeah. is there sort of, where do you want to end up in your pro career where you'd be happy being in that position? Well, obviously my end goal is to get to the UFC and fight in the UFC, but um, I think this year I might just, Stick to Almighty to be honest, because like Ray Ray runs a great show and like he looks after the fight as well and the promotions always the the um like production of the show is always dead good and the fighters are all looked after. All the shows match well. There's no like you see some of these shows now on the regional scene. It's just like cans fighting people who are decent. It's just shocking. It's terrible. Like some of the matchmaking is horrible. It's shite. But like Ray always matches his show is good and. So I'll probably just stick to I know he's doing that show in Liverpool in July. I think there's another one October and then like November or December. So there's another so if we get like four fights in this year and then after that just see where I'm see where I'm at from for next year. Next year start going into like the European season. I know that um I think Aries that Aries in France, I know they are looking for flyweight, so and they're paying good, they're doing ten thousand pound bonuses and stuff like that. So I wouldn't mind getting on some survey like that or Brave, something like that. Yeah, as well, in terms of what you said, obviously, getting to the USC is the main goal. But And then you mentioned, obviously, stick to all this year and then make the transition into the European promotions. Is that the sort of, But when you was an amateur, what was the sort of goal as the amateur career as well before you turned to pro? Do you think you've accomplished everything in your amateur career that you plan to, and then you can replicate that into your pro as well? Or were there still things in the amateur that you wish you might have done compared to now looking back on it? Yeah, well, I think... Um... I would have liked to go to the UKSC belt when when I fought um, Zach Fry. I, th I think I think I was winning the fight until I just got, I got caught in a triangle. I think I was probably up on points. I think one of the judges even said you. As I went over and spoke to him and said, "But what what what, what did you have me scored?" I think it, you had me three or four rounds. So so it was the fourth round. I think I was three rounds to one. So I was three rounds up against them, and I just got caught. But that happens. It's like you know what I mean, and like me head. To be honest, my headspace in that fight weren't really that good. Like, I had a few like, personal issues going on, but I didn't want to pull out and like shit like that. But I would have liked to go for the UKC belts. I think UKC and Almighty are the two best regional promotions at the minute. I, I obviously got the Almighty belt and defender against Penn Bafey, and That Penn Bafey fight for me was like the, the thing where it's like, yeah, I'm ready to go pro now because Luke's, Luke's good. I, I rate Luke. He's good. He's got a, a good Jiu Jitsu game and he's well rounded and he's from a good gym and that. So, after that fight, I think me and Phil both knew he was on the back and Phil was like, yeah, you're ready to turn over now. Let's, let's get your pro debut set up on that. So I didn't really like not accomplish anything that I wanted, but maybe like that UKFC title at Almighty uh, and the Almighty one might have been like a bit of a thing, but I didn't feel like a, I didn't not accomplish anything at, at amateur, you know what I mean? Like I fought the best of the best really at the time and... I, I finished my amateur career defending the title, so I think I had a pretty all right career. My, my record didn't, it doesn't really say that, but if you look at who I fought, I haven't fought anyone's shit. 100%. I mean, obviously, you've already mentioned the lights as well that you face. I mean, you've got Sheldon Ryan now, who's one of the best flyweights as well that you've fought. So you have 100%, you've fought the best of the best that there were at the time that you won 25 division. Yeah. And then now, also going into the pros, you're already nearly breaking into that top 30 out of everyone that there is but if there's a sort of ranking that at the end of this year after a few more fights that you think you can be at where do you uh, think that sort of puts you at the end of it if you could say uh, well I, I, obviously the, I want to win every fight this year so I reckon that could put me in top top 15 or something like that a few of the um, fighters in, 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 in UK are pro flyweight some of them are not really that active you know what I mean so 
I'd like to stay active or try and get a fight every eight weeks or sort of eight to 12 weeks and just climb the rank and slowly. There's no point rushing it because, like I said, I'm still only like 25. It's quite early on in my career. So, and um, the Sheldon Ryan fight, I think, again, that Sheldon Ryan fight, I think, started a bit slow. If it was a five round fight, I probably would have finished him as well. Um, again, that was probably a fight where me had win in the right space, but like, I, I, I've spoken to people before on podcasts and stuff like that and said, like, I spoke to um, Dan McGonagall of this man, PT, man coach and stuff like that. And since I talked to him, like my whole outlook on the fighting career has changed. So I think that was like a massive thing for me. And when I spoke to him, like that changed my whole outlook on the fighting and stuff like that. So I think maybe me and Sheldon might end up fighting at the pro level, maybe, I reckon, to be honest with you, which would be a good fight again. But whether he'll take it or not, and I, I don't know, but... That that would would add. Oh, that's a fight that I wouldn't mind getting again. Like no, I don't, obviously I'm not gonna start be like, oh yeah, I want to fight you, you know. But but, but I think personally it'd be a good good fight for both of us, and eventually we could end up meeting. But if we don't, it doesn't matter, you know what I mean? Because I think I got offered him an amateur, I think, um, to defend my title at Almighty, but I don't know if he was maxing or something else. So I think he turned it down. But um, yeah, like I said. Uh, we could end up meeting again at the pros because there's not many pros in the UK as to now at the minute. So maybe I think he's on the verge of turning over. I think if he beats, he's think Joe Fields next. Uh, he's fought Joe Fields and Joe Fields are able to beat him, oh, but yeah. he's now booked against Malik. Uh, the next Almighty event that's on May twenty eighth as well. Oh yeah, I'll, be, I'll probably be going to that. Like so, uh, that'll be a good fight to watch. But I think Sheldon probably beats them to be honest. Um, the Luke Luke Baines with a bit fight with it being good against Malik as well, but. Obviously, that couldn't happen, but like I said, I think he's on the verge of turning over to the pro now, Sheldon, to be honest. I think he's for pretty much everyone he can eat. And that's another thing I give him props. He's always for good people. He's never fought anyone shit. So, uh, I think it'll be a, 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 a tasty fight in the future, maybe, if, if if he's down for it. Like, Yeah, and then finally from me, obviously, in, in terms of your training, you're training out of Aspire. But does any sort of your training partners, coaches, sponsors, etc., that you want to shout out? Obviously, just feel free to go ahead and do that, buddy. Um, I've got I've got a few sponsors, so if I miss anyone out, I apologise. Um, I'm sponsored by Orange County CBD, who sought me out with that. Triple Bullies. Um, I'm sponsored by Sleepyheads. Um, Empire Pro Tape. They sponsor me now. Um, who else have I got? To see the Frequency Fitness, which top I've got on, and. I can't remember all the others, but there's, there's other ones as well. Um, but like, I think, like, personally, I think Phil and Dean don't get enough props for what they're doing in, 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 for, like, I don't think a lot of, like, these, like, journalists and stuff like that, like yourself and stuff like that, realise what how much they put into to all the fighters in our gym. Like, they, when you're in fight camp, they'll get you in and do three or four sessions with your one-to-one. Don't charge you, don't they'll do it for free because like, they want us, want us to do good so I think like Phil and Dean and Aaron Robinson and stuff like that they need like a massive like shout out for everything that they do in the gym and all the other training partners in the gym and stuff like that like Luke I spar with Luke constantly Ali so he Aaron Robinson I do all my rounds with them so they, they're like we're all bringing each other on so I think they all need like a, a bit of praise and I just thank everyone at the gym and all my sponsors and everyone that helps me out so that's all Right, well, that is everything from me. I really appreciate your time, obviously. No Come July, hopefully you've got the fight there ready for you and you can make yourself 2-0 and against another tough opponent. Yeah. So I appreciate your time, buddy. Thank you very much. No worries. Nice one. See you in a bit, mate. No problem.